We had the Rand hit 834.88 yesterday. The possibility of 849.50 uh, being put on the table. To what extent are you anticipating a blowout on the Rand? Morning, Alicia. I think as far as a blowout on the RAND is concerned, a lot has already happened. The RAND has moved quite sharply already. So I wouldn't anticipate another similar day to happening today. But certainly the bias remains in favor of a weaker RAND. And as we mentioned, as you mentioned, you could even see it go beyond this 840 level, perhaps as far as 850. Um, and that, of course, is highly dependent on developments in, in Europe, and as has been the case all year. Um, and now lately, the US has also added to the, to the troubles that we're seeing on global markets. And, and so the bias for the RAND really does remain um, in favor of further RAND weakness. So, and to what extent do you shrug off the sell-off that we're seeing? Because we know that it's a heavily uh, traded country. We know that it's therefore a huge proxy for risk sentiment has, and has been driven more so by the global events, as you've said, than local developments this year. Um, well, we wouldn't shrug off the latest developments in the RAND, Alicia, because all of the factors that you've mentioned have been factors of RAND trade um, since time immemorial. Um, the RAND has uh, for many years been seen as a proxy for emerging markets, being seen as um, highly vulnerable to changes in sentiment and risk, and, and that's a theme that we've uh, mentioned extensively this year in particular. So as far as, for as long as all of those factors remain, the, the bubbling sovereign debt crisis in Europe that is now into its second year, uh, you're now seeing a uh, fears over the US debt situation and, and fears over um, economic growth and now had warnings out of China as well. Um, so for as long as these factors remain in, in place, the RAND is likely to be affected by them um, and negatively so. So in the short term, we see RAND volatility remaining. We see RAND weakness remaining. The SAAB has said that it will not control the RAND volatility that we've seen. Do you see that stance being maintained? And I ask because we're looking forward to CPI numbers uh, tomorrow and that's expected to show CPI rising to 5.9% and that's sitting now at the top end of the South African Reserve Bank's target range. Um, I think it's unlikely that the Saab is going to change its stance now. Um, we've seen previous periods like this where the RAND has had blowouts and the Saab has managed to refrain from intervening in the market. I think the experiences have shown that they um, don't tend to come out best when taking on global currency markets. So I don't think that they would go that route. And also you have to consider that currently the South African government is running a deficit. So um, the environment isn't conducive to great amount of accumulation of reserves or in fact active forex intervention by the Saab at this stage. Um, so ahead of the, the inflation number, of course it's a worry. We're expecting CPI to have come very close to the upper target limit of 6%. And of course the Reserve Bank is going to be worried yeah. about that inflation outlook, um, as they mentioned when they, when they kept rates on hold. But we think that is going to be felt more through the rates outlook than really in the FX market. And I guess you've got to consider the other side of the coin as well, in that the positive is a weaker rand is usually seen as a positive for South African companies as it increases their profits when overseas earnings are brought home. Let's take a quick look at the crosses. Novoyo, the euro edged up to 135 and the dollar held firm. Ironically, we've got the U.S. currency being boosted by the kind of debt worries that persist over in the U.S. because it remains investors' preferred safe haven in, in times of market volatility. Are you surprised of the kind of a safe haven appeal the dollar is managing to hold? Um, not entirely. It's always been an anomaly that's been specific to the US dollar that in times of great risk aversion we have seen the dollar strengthen and benefit from its safe haven currency status. We've seen similar things happening with the yen and Swiss franc even though the yen has now started to weaken. Um, so we're not entirely surprised by what we're seeing in, in the moves on the dollar and in large part prompted by the fact that they're unable to reach um, a conclusion on their debt ceiling. But the, the, the irony is has certainly not escaped us. That's exactly why I asked. I mean, if we're looking at the yen's movement, the yen is another safe haven currency, but we're seeing demand weaken. So, you know, surely we should see the ki same kind of momentum. So what's deterring uh, the yen from strengthening at this stage? Um, well, Alicia, the, the yen actually has been strengthening steadily over the last two weeks. And, but of course, the, the yen and, and also Swiss franc remain vulnerable to intervention risk by both of their respective central banks. So that, of course, is always a factor you have to take into account when looking at those currency movements. Um, and as m mentioned, the, ran, the, the yen has now recently started to weaken because it came dangerously close to levels where we've previously seen the central bank intervene in the markets.